What's up, everyone? My name is Tyler Loren, and I'm just going to briefly tell you my journey of applying to Yale a second time in a row, but this time getting in. So here we go. All right. So first things first, when I applied this time and preface, I applied last year, um, made it to final rounds, got waitlisted. Mine was like focused for a whole year. Like, all right, we're going to try this stuff again. We're going to try this again. So I applied again this year. Um, I put my application in, I think in November and I started working on my pieces and this is just for me because some people like to work early. Some people like to work late, but I started on my pieces. I think Chad, don't get me to lie. I think it was like maybe in probably November, mm, September, October, November, end of November. Yeah, that's sounds about right. I started working on them in November. And so with that being said, I'm going to do a nice little plug in here. I only worked with one coach and this guy is phenomenal, y'all. Like he's a really good friend of mine, the sweetest soul, so freaking talented and he's patient. And I will put his info in the, in the little info section, but just know if you want to coach, hit that guy up. He's awesome. He's awesome. So with that being said, um, I coached with law like every other week, maybe. Again, that I, I could be wrong about that, but it was it was about that frequent. So I coached with him a lot. He was the only coach I had. And then of course I worked on the pieces a little bit on my own. See the difference between this time of, and again this is just for me but the difference between this time applying versus last year y'all i was constantly running those monologues i was always working on those monologues but the all the other thing that was different from last year i didn't have i didn't really have a coach last year right so i decided to i decided to trust myself more this year so that that was the biggest thing. I ended up listening to myself a lot more when it came to rehearsing these pieces before the actual audition. So I listened to myself and in saying that, that just means I didn't constantly run them every day. Um, I thought about them every day, but not like, not like in a, in a way where I had to, you know, as artists will, will think about something in an obsessive manner that's not necessarily positive. We're thinking about it like, God, what if I, what if I tweeted this way? What if I did it this way? Or if I did, you know, like kind of like manic. No, I thought about it like, you know, kind of like how you would think about anything you love. And that's the thing to keep in mind too. You're going in this doing something that you love. You're not going in this to do a project. You're not going in this to do, um, you know, you, it, it's not, it's supposed to be fun. It's something you love and you're literally sharing it. And I know that sounds cliche, y'all. That is what the panel is looking for. The panel is looking for you to have fun, to, you know, show your art. This is them getting to see you. So going in, they're going to ask you to do or bring at least four pieces. So two are going to be classical, two are going to be contemporary. They say so they're suggesting two extra pieces, bring in all four. It's a good chance they might say, do you have anything else? And you don't want to be caught in that situation where you only had two. So make sure you prepare four. My four, I have every intention on actually posting all four of them so y'all can see it. Knowing me, I don't know when that's going to be. But I do, I intend on putting them up there. So... My four pieces, I started with, in my initial audition, I started with Lady Macbeth, her very first monologue. Um, and then from there, I went into Emma from People, Places, and Things. It's a really good play. And then from there, my backups were Juliet from Romeo and Juliet, and then Norca from Our Lady of 100. 21st Street, 121st Street. So from there, they may ask you to sing a song. They didn't ask me to sing, at least not in the initial audition. They are going to ask you in the final round. 
but they, they're not looking for fantastic singers. They just want to see how you handle your voice, how you handle your body. Can you tell a story through song? They just want to see, they, y'all, they really just want to see you play. That is all. From the monologues to the song, that is it. The song I sang was from Lion King 2. So from there, you get in the room. Um, it's going to be just one of the faculty members and a current student. The student is really just there for moral support. They're just there to, to watch, to observe. They don't really say anything. So I went in. I did my pieces. I started with Lady M. And I don't know if this is expected of everyone or if this is just something that I did both times that I auditioned, but there was no like solid button between each piece. You know what I mean? Like there was no thank you, there was no bow, nothing, nothing like that. So after I finished one piece, took a moment, breathe, get up, and just, you know, kind of naturally flow into the next piece. You don't have to say anything. They understand that you're there to do two pieces, right? So with that being said, this is so important. This is so important. Use the space. There's going to be there's going to be one line of tape on the ground. That's your only rule. Don't pass that line of tape, right? But everything behind this piece of tape is your room to play. Y'all have y'all use it. It's fun. I mean, in one room, there was a fireplace, and then you got chairs somewhere else. It's stacked up. You got a window. There's a radiator. I mean, it's your playground. Make it what you want. You are playing. They expect to see you use the space. So I took my time. I was walking around, and when I say take my time, it's going to feel like time does not exist in that room. I took, I swear to God, it was at least 60 seconds of just silence of walking around, I didn't say anything, I was just touching a chair, I think. Uh, I don't know. Take your time. They are truly looking for you to take your time. So, I did Lady M, took my time, moved into Emma, and then after that, the faculty member was like, okay, okay, now Tyler, do you... Do you have anything that brings you joy? What do you have any other pieces? And I'm like, yeah, I got uh, I got Norca from 121st Street, and then I got Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. And she's like, I, I like the reaction that you just had with Juliet. Do Juliet. I'm like, okay, bet I'll do it. So I did Juliet. Now, when I did it, the first time I was all over the place physically. So I, I'm doing my piece, and it's just. I'm thinking, like, it's Juliet's a young girl, so of course it's a lot of energy. I embodied that physically. So after that piece was done, I, got, I did get a note, and the faculty member said, okay, I'm going to give you a note. This time, when you do it, I don't want you to move. Do not move until you feel compelled to. So I changed it up completely. Like, I was on my feet the entire time, but this time I'm like, okay. So I just sat down. I sat on the ground. And I did not move from that one spot until maybe like the second to last line. And it was, it was different. It was different. And so after that, she said, thank you. Very good job at taking the adjustment. If you get an adjustment, do not think that is anything wrong. It is nothing wrong. In fact, think of it as a blessing because now this is your ability to showcase how you can take direction. So if you pride yourself on taking direction, boom, that's like a little present right there. So bam, you get that. So she said, thank you. I said, thank you. I walked out the room and now you just wait for your, your group to be finished. And once the group is done, they're going to bring out a sheet of paper and they're going to post it on the wall and it's going to list everyone's name that they want to see for a second look. Now, if your name is not on that list, then you are dismissed for the day, you are done. They thank you for your time, they thank you for your, your sharing, that's it. Out of, again, maybe like really 13 to 15 people in my group, there were either three or two, I think there were just two of us on the list. So I saw my name, I was like, oh, okay, great, great. Immediately went back and there was like just a few minutes in between of just seeing your name and then boom, you're going back in. 
So I went back in, but this time, instead of it being just one faculty member and a student, now you got all three faculty members that are adjudicating. So, and my day, they, it was actually all women. So every faculty member that was watching, they were there. First thing they said was, okay, Tyler, can you uh, go ahead and show us Juliet again? And you can take the note or you can do whatever feels comfortable. It's completely up to you. Again, that is a soft suggestion. That is a soft suggestion. Take the note, take the note. Do not go back to what you would take the note. So. I took the note, I sat back down on the floor, I did Juliet, and then immediately the other faculty member was like, okay, can we see, can we see Emma? Can we see Emma? Did Emma, that was it, they thanked me, I walked out, and then from there, now you're gonna be waiting for another list to go up, and that will be the end of day callbacks. So that is gonna be everyone that was on their individual list, throughout the day from morning to afternoon to evening. Now it's just gonna be one poof, end of day list. So out of all three groups throughout the day, there's only three or four of us on that list. So by that time, I think it was like maybe 7.30, 7.30 PM, something like that. Ah. So at this point, if you are on that final, final list, thank God you are done doing monologues, you're done performing for the day. This list is um, really just for an interview. So you go in, you interview. At that point when I interviewed, um, we were back down to just two faculty members. I think one of them had to leave early. And yeah, we just talked for a little bit. Um, <laughs> it can get really personal. Uh, they the only bit of advice I can give for the interview just from things that I've heard before is good God they do not want to see how pristine you are they do not want to see what you think a Yale student or a master student should look like they don't care about that they really don't so much so that <laughs> I don't know if I should say this so much so that in my letter because they're gonna ask you to also write um, like your statement of purpose or something like that. Even in that statement of purpose, they don't want you to write it like a scholarly student. They want you to write it as you. My letter, my letter was literally how I talk. So there was no hard INGs or ERs or anything. Like I abbreviated everything in my letter. I know I cussed a few times in the letter. Um, I might have talked about substance abuse in the letter. I don't even know. But the point is, they, they're not looking for clean cut stuff. They just really want to see you as a person. And the same goes for the interview. So that happened. Um, so the final, nope, nope. So first audition was January 28th. And then by February 10th, I got an email that said, you are welcome to the, or we welcome you to the final round callbacks. So final round callbacks happen. And from there, they are gonna fly y'all out. I don't, I hope that does not change, but they're gonna fly y'all out no matter where you are from, uh, unless you're from New York, they did not fly me out, I took a train. But they'll fly you out, fly you to Connecticut. They will host you in a nearby hotel. It's on campus, so it's like, a couple minutes walking to where you actually need to go for the callbacks it's really nice um yeah so I found out got there you're going to be split up into either group a or group b now group a goes pretty much they audition a day before group b when you do get to the hotel you are most likely going to have a roommate who is in group a if you're in group b my roommate was really cool. We actually are classmates now. And from that point, yeah, it, it's really quick, y'all. You check in, you, at least, I don't, I don't know if everybody did, but I got to meet a good chunk of group A. And of course, got to know group B really well. 
when you first get there, no matter which group you're in, you are going to go out to dinner with the current students and you're just going to chit chat a little bit there. And the following day, the fun begins. Okay. So the day of the audition, you're going to start your day with breakfast. The school is going to provide that for you. You eat with your group. After you finish eating, you're going to go downstairs, do a nice little introduction slash warm up with most of the faculty members that you saw in your initial audition, plus some other ones. Uh, from there, after you eat, after you do your group warm up, then they're going to post a list that tells the order of everyone going back in to do their monologues one more time for the faculty. Construction, and um, so after you do your monologue again and again, it's it's not in front of Group B altogether. It's just you and the faculty. After that, you actually get to do three classes with faculty members. So from there, and they feed you lunch. They give you lunch. So after you eat your lunch, after you do your monologues, your first class it's going to be a movement class, and then from there we go into it's voice and then after that it's improv from there y'all they're really just trying to see how everyone operates with each other so at this point don't think it has anything to do with like oh god am i talented enough oh god is my monologue good enough is it, you, know, the, you wouldn't be there if if your talent wasn't on point you know so it and they they mention that several times throughout the day whether it's a student or a faculty member they will let you know at this point in the game it has nothing to do with that they love what they see at this point they're trying to see how we can build a class you know how we can build a cohort so really they're just trying to in the classes pay attention to how you give how you receive and then the final part of that day after the classes is a final interview and that's one other thing that they're trying to see how does that operate with everybody <laughs> we're so close to the end <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't even know what they're building God damn. All right, so when you go in for your final interview, this is pretty important too. So they're not, when you go in for your final interview, again, it's it's gonna be the same as um, your initial one. Just be you, be you. I cannot stress that enough. I, I literally talked about dark, I talked about dark shit. I talked about dark shit in my interview. They don't want you to keep it all clean. They, they, and I was nervous about bringing up some of the darker things. I really was because I thought like, oh my God, if I tell them this side of me, maybe they're going to think that I can't handle this program right now because of whatever crap I've got going on in my life. That's not true. It's really not true. You deserve to be seen. And that's the point of you being there that day. So be honest be open if, if you get angry you get angry if you cry you cry and really think of it as y'all truly it's all a blessing at this point think of think of all of this as a blessing at this point because you're just getting to showcase yourself and I don't even just mean as an artist just as a person on your journey to that point that's that's big that's beautiful really really and and they're aware of that and they want to see you so keep that in mind after the interviews are done you're done you are done you are done oh they will of course put up a list for the interview as well like who goes when for the interview um expect to run up run behind a little bit every now and then i mean this is, it, you're watching a lot um Trying to go back, there are little pieces that I know I'm forgetting. There are 32, 16 plus 16 is 32.
typically, so typically they're going to be 32 people that are called back for that final round. Keep that in mind. And yeah, you on the very last day, you get to, oh, there's a Q&A with the students after you're done with your interview and everything. There's a Q&A that evening. And you get to talk to the students very candidly. Whatever questions that you have that you're like, mm, that's not appropriate to ask a faculty member, ask the students. Ask the students. Like, and, and even when I say not appropriate, I mean maybe you just don't feel comfortable asking a faculty member. Ask the students. You know? And they're very open. They're very honest. That's the point of them being there. And they feed you. It's more dinner. I think it's pizza. It's really nice. So from there, the following day before you leave, you get to meet with financial aid. And they'll do a little Q&A there. And then Tamala will come back out. And she'll have a final Q&A with you guys as well. And that's it. That's it. So the rest is history. Um, yeah. So I have, again, every intention on actually putting up those monologues so y'all can see what I was playing with. And yeah, man. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, again, hit up that acting coach. He's amazing. He's amazing. Um, so many of his clients got callbacks for... Uh, for Brown, for Juilliard, for Yale, for um, NYU. I'm pretty sure most, if not all of them, got callbacks. Hit him up, y'all. He's going to help. He, he actually is a current Yale student. So, he's amazing. But yeah, so that's it. I hope y'all enjoy this video. And hopefully there are more to come. Bye, y'all.